Hey guys, I'm Folygon here with your daily dose of ZBrush and work motivation. In this ZBrush tutorial, we're going to be covering the creation of a stylized female face one step at a time. Five videos, five parts in total. Today is the fourth video of this series and we're going to be sculpting the lips here. Pause this video now if you haven't seen the previous few videos. You can find those linked down in the description below. Go watch those first and then come on back and we can start on the lips. I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit here as I'm working on these lips so you can kind of get a quicker look at what I'm doing as I work on these. Try and follow along. If I'm going too fast, you can pause it. If there's a step that you miss or if there's a tool that I use that you're a little confused about, just go ahead and throw a question down in the comments below and I will for sure answer it for you. Let's go ahead and get started on our lips here. We're gonna end up splitting the lower jaw from the head. For my personal workflow, I find that this is extremely helpful. If you're looking at a pair of lips, they have this kind of intersecting portion between the two lips. And it's really hard to get that kind of deep crevice when you're sculpting on a single mesh. So if we use this kind of idea of just having two separate tools for both the top and the bottom lip, and we can get those two shapes, those two essentially tubes to lay up against each other, and then we don't have to worry about them being dynamish together later on or having any weird geometry problems like that. I'll just try and get the basic ball of the, the mouth. It's more of like a semi or a half sphere laying on top of the face. So continue to bubble that shape out. Make sure you have your reference up in front of you as you work. Referencing that as well as kind of what I'm doing here. So I've talked previously about how all shapes of the face work together. This is an instance where, while working on the lips, uh, my lips are a little bit small right now. And of course I wanna increase that size and I'll do that here in a bit. As I'm working on the lips, I wanna make my nose a bit bigger and I wanna shrink the distance between my chin or at least the bottom of my chin and my lips as well. So you'll see me make some of those changes as I go to the whole face. So again, that's just kind of proportional changes that because I'm sculpting all these things as as a finished or close to finished pieces, more so than I would do one at a time. Um, normally I'm going around the whole face, working on the eyes, nose, mouth, and ears all at the same time. So it's a little bit harder to kind of keep all your proportions exactly where you want them to be. The way I'm doing this, I would recommend that you work on your face as a whole, kind of spending about 10, 15 minutes on your eyes, from there, jump to your nose, then your lips, then your ears, spending about 10 to 15 minutes on each part. And then kind of circle around your mesh, kind of following that process. You don't want to stick too long on one part, but at least for this, since we're kind of focusing on the eyes or the nose or the lips, I'm more likely to, to at least follow that guideline for this series. So just keep that in mind as you're working on your own character. If you want to try to be more consistent and have your, your proportions stay more true throughout your sculpt, you kind of want to keep that in mind and focus on that. Now as I'm working on this mesh, even though it's a little rough still right now, I'm always zooming out to kind of get a larger picture of what my character is starting to take shape as. So just keep in mind that you don't want to stay zoomed in too long on a single part. You always want to try and get that that mile high view and be able to see the big picture. If you noticed as I've been working, I kind of flip on my perspective on and off. It's a good idea to kind of figure out what works for you, but I like keeping my perspective off most of the time. Um, and the reason I keep my perspective off for most of the time is that I can look at my model from an orthographic view, get a, get a great view of its silhouette, know exactly what it's gonna look like from that perspective. Uh, it just kind of helps with sculpting forms and, and knowing how a shape or a concave or a convex uh, surface is going to turn. And then turning on that perspective is also going to help you with seeing what something's going to actually look like. So if you were to print this thing out, I like to keep my perspective set at around 30. That's pretty close to what real world perspective is going to be as far as your camera view, your camera angle. It all depends on uh, just, just your preferences, so go ahead, mess around with it find out what works for you, and just know that it's important to experiment. All right, guys, I think that's gonna do it for us. I just wanna say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you come back for tomorrow's video, which is gonna be sculpting the ears, and I'll see you guys next time.